What's up guys, my name is Uncaged Games, welcome back to another episode of Back to the Future, the game, last episode. Pretty much we got Emmett's invention to work, his dad's on his side, everything's good and dandy, but then Edna took one of the DeLoreans and drove it back in time, and now we are in this alternate universe or something. Let's go talk to her. Okay, there's like a string right there, so I don't know if he's going to set off an alarm or something. Oh goodness. Oh my the goodness. <gasps> Pardon us for intruding, madam. We were wondering if you could tell us. I don't talk to hooligans! On a very friendly sort. That, that was Edna. Edna Strickland? Impossible. This is how she was when I first met her. I had to. Listen, just leave it to me. Okay, if you think you know how to handle her, just remember we need to know what happened to Hill Valley and just as importantly, the precise time when it happened. Gotcha. All right. Now let's try to hop over this thing. I didn't even touch it. Hey, Mr. Who are you? Um, <laughs> Yakov Shmirnov. Uh, Yakov Shmirnov? That's a foolish name. And I make it a rule not to talk to strangers with foolish names. You're the one that gave me the We're name. We're not strangers. I know you. You interviewed me once. You interviewed me once, back when you were young. Listen, Sonny, I'm an easygoing woman, but I got a few rules I live by. And rule number one is, I never, ever talk about the past! Or the future, neither. I don't talk about any day but today. Interesting. I guess that didn't go so well. Of course she doesn't talk about the past. Because there's something in her past she's trying to forget. But we're gonna pry it out of her. Go ahead, knock on the door again. We didn't actually knock on the door the first time. We're just like touching the tripwire. Like, can't we just step over it? What? It's me again, your old friend. I know you. Uh, we spent today together. We spent the day together. Uh, yeah. We did? Where? At the expo. That's crazy. I've been here all... What day is it? Tuesday, October 13th, 1931. October 13th, 1931. October 13th. Something funny about that date. Well, what are you here for? Um. You stole DeLorean. You see that car over there? You stole that from, from Carl Sagan. And you, you time jumped into the past. Me? Steal a car? You got a lot of nerve, Sonny. Everyone in town knows that Mary Pickford's the most law-abiding citizen that Hill Valley's ever had. Then I don't give a fig about the past. Okay, I brought you something I for brought you. something for you. What is it? Let me see. <laughs> I brought you him. Yes. Him. Oh, him. Him ho. Him he. It's Emmett Brown. Look hard. Don't tell me you don't recognize your own boyfriend. My boyfriend? Yeah, he's, um, he's all grown up. Come closer, fella. Marty, what am I supposed to do? Just Trust on. me, Doc. <laughs> Just go with it. It can't be! Emmett! Yes, Edna. It's me. Put down the thing. It is! It's October 13th, 1931! Oh, and you are Emmett! <gasps> Emmett! Oh. How did I get so turned around? H have I been dreaming? Or well, stay there. Yes, we it's got a it. Classic case of repressed memory syndrome. Once the mental dam is broken, the subject is immediately plunged into the midst of the very scenes she's trying to forget. Oh my goodness! Timer has not treated her well. That's not gonna do anything. Oof. 
Darling, you've come back. Actually, we gotta leave. Oh God, please don't kiss him. If he does, oh God, sorry, dog. Of course I knew you would. An intelligent boy like you wouldn't be one to throw away true love all because of a silly Look at Doc's quarrel. skin and look at hers. I've already Doc forgotten about tries. last night's little tiff. I trust you've done the same? Of course I have. Of course I have. What? Uh, uh, uh. Um. Babyface. Babyface. That's not your pet name for me. Wait a minute. Oh, What's going oh, on? Oh, crap. Schnookums. Uh, uh, uh <laughs> You're sweet. But you're still keeping company with this Smirnoff character. I insist you drop him. He's a bad influence. And you've got to stop working on that dangerous electrokinetic... What's this? Um, okay. Hmm. <laughs> I suppose now you're miffed with me for forcing Detective Parker to close your booth down. Bitter medicine for you, I know, but I had to do it. And Parker had no choice but to obey my orders. He knows that my opinion carries a lot of weight in Hill Valley, and he'd never... Parker would never... Oh... Oh, God. What is it? I don't know. Something about Detective Parker. Something that happened to me on October 13th. What could it be? Can you jog her memory? If we can keep her mind in the past, we may get the full story of Hill Valley's premature destruction. Okay, let's talk to her. Here's something that'll make you remember. Remember what? I don't like to remember. Who are you? What are you doing in my yard, you hooligan? Uh, uh, no, no, very bad memory. No yard. What? This is Emmett speaking. It's October 13th, 1931. Yes. And something's about to happen. Oh, yes, something big. But what? Better not talk to her directly. It'll break the spell. Okay. So we gotta talk through Emmett or Doc? Yeah, Doc. Help me figure something out. Yes? Um... I'm not sure what she's searching for. Did Detective Parker do something to Edna at the expo? Yeah, he tried to arrest her. That must be it. Can you think of a way to prompt her memory? Let's see. I'll figure something out. I'm sure you will. We're gonna give the plan to her now. Oh my it was god, a she is. I was framed. She is all messed <laughs> up in the head. Me. Ha! He'll never oh catch god. me in this souped up car of the future. Curses! I can't shake him. Well, no use in holding back now. Let's see what this baby can do. And here it comes! Yes? Here what comes? I, uh. I, I don't know. Something really unexpected is supposed to happen right about now, but I'm not sure what. Oh, come to think of it, how can I be expecting something unexpected? At, oh, what's going on? Quick, Marty. We've got to find a way to push the story along before she snaps out of her reverie. Okay, um... I don't uh... suppose the flux capacitor still works. I build my parts sturdy, but not that sturdy. So how do we get that to work? Any any uh, any ideas here? I wonder what's cooking. Let's find out. Burning stick. We have power of fire. I guess this isn't the right time to be burnt. Ouch! Hello? Damn it, I'm Kate. 
Do you answer next time? I just answer right now. What do you want? Listen here, boy. I will fight you to the death. Okay, well, can you do it after? I'm recording a video. Okay. Here they come. Oh. The lights. I'm being transported. Yes, you are. Where? To the past! What do you see? Hill Valley! But it's all different. It's so small and primitive. Heavens! Can it be? It is! Is what? Grandfather! Big as <laughs> life! God, she is crazy. Marshal James Strickland came to Hill Valley in 1869, shot by ma I know, Doc. We met him in 1885. Remember? No! I must be mistaken. Grandfather didn't look like that. That man is an imposter. I'm not even sure it is a man. <laughs> this is all very confusing. It's a cactus. Where am I? Why am I thinking about the past? Get off my lawn, you kids. Better find a way to bring back Marshal Strickland quick. We've got to bring this story to a climax. Uh, put a hat on him. Or put a hat on the cactus. Nice fit. Looks like a Strickland to me. Like my little brother, perhaps, but not like my grandfather. Grandfather was much more uh, shaggy. Looks like a Strickland to me. Like my little brother, perhaps, but not like my grandfather. Grandfather was much more uh, shaggy. How about, uh, mop? <laughs> there you go. Oh, Grandfather, how well you look. How well everything looks. How does everything look? Tell me. It's a bit rustic, to be sure. But all the buildings are so sturdy and well-kept. And the young people of Hill Valley... They're so virtuous and upright. So unlike the degenerate specimens from the 20th century. And I know the reason why. Why? They haven't yet fallen prey to the vices of booze and debauchery. They are okay. still in a state of innocence. I think I could learn to like living here. <gasps> but who's this? Who? This big lout swaggering up the street. Lips curled in an insolent sneer. He's a newcomer to Hill Valley. Uh, Beauregard. Beauregard... Tannen? Tannen. Yes! Good guess. Look at him. Acting like a big shot. Throwing his money around. Stolen money, no doubt. Why can't they see through him? The two-bit phony! And now his plan becomes clear. He's bought a plot of land in town. He's going to put up a... Uh, uh, a what? I don't know. It's something I don't like. Something evil. Bar? This is the key to our mystery. We've got to get her memory back in the groove. Okay. Um... Can we burn down the thing now, maybe? There we go. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Don't upset her, Marty. I guess this isn't the right time to be burning things. <sighs> then what is the right time? Maybe we can put this here. Ah, uh, it works. Talk about a watering hole. A saloon? In Hill Valley? Oh, he can't do that! Grandpa, you can't let him do it! You can't let that don't, snake don't ruin hug it. paradise! Well, if they're all too blind to stop him, I'll just have to take the law into my own hands. I'll make sure this sinful establishment never opens its doors. I'll... I don't know what I'll do. 
But I'll do something. Something very conclusive. Like burn it down? Okay. No, you're doing it all wrong. It'll never burn like that. She's First, an expert. we'll need some kerosene. Okay. Apply it liberally to the building site. No sense in being parsimonious. And now, watch. I set fire to the outhouse. Isn't it beautiful? The devil's handiwork consumed by the fires of righteousness. <laughs> burn, you sucker, burn! <laughs> she was never this passionate when we were dating. Uh oh. What is it, Edna? Is it the fire? Turn away! Don't look! It's not staying in the saloon, is it? It's spreading to the other buildings in Hill Valley. Ah, My that's what happened. Were pure. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. But it did happen like this. And you've been repressing it all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're a hooligan. Oh, I'm how a ironic. Hooligan. <laughs> so we just gotta go back to that time where she burns Why everything down. Here's the story. Black and white and red all over. Huh. Hill Valley destroyed by fire. Started approximately 2 a.m. July 17th, 1876. Of course, I'm not the real criminal in this oh, story. Am I, snap. Mr. Sagan? You set me up for a fall. You and Schmernoff. You made me steal your infernal car. You made me burn down Hill Valley. And now, by the powers invested in me by the town of Hill Valley, I hereby sentence oh God, you to criminals hey. to you. How much have you heard? Thank you. Enough for a month's worth of headlines in a Hayesville Herald. Two months worth if you shoot those fellas. I could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law, you right? You tell. You tell her. Oh, them. This is them your cutest get out. hand. Right. Much obliged. Nice moves there. All right, we're going back in time. Back to the saloon. There's Beauregard Tannen's half-finished saloon. Sometime during the next hour, Edna's going to light it on fire and accidentally burn down Hill Valley. I wonder where her DeLorean is. We'll find it later. Right now, we've got to stop that fire. I'll go around back. You go through the front. Got it. Oh, there he is. Or that is uh, Edna's... What is it? Grandfather? Oh, that's Tannen. <laughs> I'd better not get too close. Sneak attack. There's Edna. Who's there? Edna, stop. It, it's just me. Mr. Sagan, what are you doing here? I was going to ask you the same oh, question, Miss Pickford. Isn't it obvious? I'm putting an end to your den of iniquity before it starts. I don't think so, Mary. He had I don't a like quick shooting drink. women, but no one comes between Beauregard B. Tannen and his livelihood. Tannen, stop! You shoot her, she'll drop the torch, and this whole place will burn up. Edna, stop! If you drop that torch, he'll shoot us! Looks like we're at something of a standoff here, Mr. Tannen. I don't see a way out unless somebody manages to disarm <laughs> both of you at the same time. How the hell am I supposed to do that? No pressure. What do we even have in our... We have, like, nothing. Maybe I could jump him. Oh, may maybe not. Dolores Miskin? Um. Cripes, it's no wonder the town went up. I can smell the kerosene from here. Oh, is it loose painting? Or tacky? Oh, here we go. Oh, look at this contraption. What's the matter, Miss Pickford? Scared of a little mouse? 
No, but you should be scared. Mice carry diseases. It's a fact. Look it up. What is that? Sandbag. Can we get that? Man, this thing is not light. Maybe we can come to a more uh, peaceful huh. solution, Mr. Tannen. Keep your distance, fancy pants. Oh, Pickle man. juice. That ought to be handy for putting out torches. It's too heavy to lift. But maybe we can, like, climb these. And then sandbag. <clears throat> Chandelier. Not sure what that pallet. <sighs> okay, we just gotta keep on putting him. Crap. It's right Ooh, over his head. God, but that was close. I can't knock him out while Edna's still holding that torch. I wonder what's in these. Oh stop, quiet! God. What the hell? Nothing. Oh cow crap. There goes all my pickled pig's feet. Okay, now it's light enough. Going down. Looks like your torch is getting a little dim there, Miss Pickford. It's still hot enough to bring down this little bit of Gamora, Tannen. Sandbag, one last one. Ugh. All Actually, right, physics. It. Good. Now we go back up and then roll that barrel onto them. Get a little double kill, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. All right. Lucky that it rolled like that. What was that noise? What noise? I didn't hear a noise. Now, we go back down. There we go. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Okay, that was lucky. Won't be long now. That was we'll extremely lucky. We'll just see. Okay, now we can grab the sandbag. Come on. Got any last words? I'll see you in hell, Tannen. You first, lady. Ooh. Come on, you son of a. <gasps> ha! Nice. Who the hell are you? I'm the diversion, butthead. Nice one, Doc. Nice one, Doc. Oh, Don't okay, tell wow. Clara. She thinks Fistikov set a bad example for the boys. Now, where's Edna? Doc, she's gone. How's she? Oh my gosh, she got that vehicle Edna's again. Edna's DeLorean. We gotta stop her before she hits 88 miles per hour. Come on. Okay, Edna, nothing to be worried about. Now we gotta You're chase a again. Woman with a strong moral compass. You just need to think your way out of it. Oh, fudge! That's right. Mine can fly. What's she doing? I think she's spouting euphemisms at us. Luckily, the road out of Hill Valley is still pretty rough in 1875. It's unlikely she'll manage to accelerate 88 miles an hour anytime soon. How are we gonna stop her? Good question. We can't risk injuring her or damaging the vehicle for fear of altering the timeline even further. Luckily, those diagnostic lights my alternate itself put all over her the Royal have given me an idea. Here, take these. What are these? Flux synchronization modules. How do they work? I generally use them for maintenance purposes. But we might be able to use them to sync up with the alternate Lord's diagnostic modules, thus making it possible to link both sets of time circuits and override the time destination of the alternate DeLorean. At least that's the theory, anyway. But that's it's just a, a theory game plan. theory. I think. Best of all, we won't need well the modules to Snap them over the diagnostic lights. Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to go out there? How the heck am I supposed to do that? Good question. Let me think. Aha! The hoverboard? Do you have the hoverboard? Yes! Uh, hoverboard. <laughs> the hoverboard! Hides a few times before, so it seemed like the appropriate tool to bring along for the job. Sweet. What a classic. What a classic. Now all we need is uh, Nike Air Mags, man. Oh, uh, yeah, man. It's just like riding a bike. 
ready to make the jump? Ready, Doc. Let's do it. One, two, three, jump. Whoa. Nice form, buddy. How's the reception on the wireless? Great. Where'd you get these? From Burns Cash, a 21st century video game console. <laughs> now remember, all you've got to do is attach the functioning modules to those diagnostic lights. Will do, Doc. Sounds simple enough. Alright. Don't let her see us. Don't let her see us. There we go. Alright. Nicely done. Now, aim the sink toward the receiving dish. I'll try, but it's getting a little bumpy out here. I already put a flux override here. Uh... And we good. Wait. Oh no. We got it. Oh, oh. Okay, not very nice. Great, that's one fuck thing down. Two to go. Front bumper. This is pretty risky here. Whoa. Oh no. Yes, she can't see the rear, uh, the, the window anymore. So this is our chance, right? Don't cross through those flames. They may be radioactive. I don't even like crossing through normal flames. Windshield wipers. I'm gonna take this. Thank you very much. There we go. And now we go around town. Yep, you can't see us now. Made it. Excellent. Now let's get that flight over right much more before she starts making life difficult. Like she's been making it easy up till now? <laughs> there we go. Here goes nothing, Doc. And connection. Whoa! Perfect! Now, aim the boxing towards the receiving dish on my DeLorean. Receiving dish, receiving dish, uh, check! I already put a flux override okay, here. Okay, I'm sorry. Almost there. Nice. Lights are green. Everything's a go. Oh, Just one buck seat left. Get off my car, you hooligan! Wait, but where does the last one go? Oh, it's on top? Oh, we should have one for that one first. I can't reach it from here. Let's talk to her. Edna! What? Let me in! You want in? That's what we wanted, thank you. Marty, are you all right? Um, not really. Open the window so I can talk to you, girl. What? Pull over. No. You're in a lot of danger. So are you. But I'll risk Give it, it for the biscuit. You first. Give it up. You first. She's a, she's a tricky one. Sure uh, with that. Okay. Whoa. There we go. Now we can put it. Excellent, Marty. Now that you're on top of the door, and you can attach the flux sink to the overhead flux emitter. It's great, Doc. Boom. And then boom. Ha! Nicely done. Now aim the sink toward the receiving dish. Oh man, now it's upside down. This is, this is this is freaky. 
pretty sure it's good. Nice. Three beams of awesomeness. That's it! Get out of there, buddy! Phew. Come on, Marty, surf's up. Nice one, Doc. Oil with the flux synchronizers, and that's strange. Oh no. What? According to these readings, the temporal cohesion of Edna's DeLorean is decaying at an alarming rate. English, Doc. We've got to get Edna home now. Eighty-eight miles per hour. Let's go. And, and, and there we go. <laughs> right where you uh, belong. In the slammer. <laughs> Officer Parker's here. Parker? Then I must be back in... Would you be kind enough to tell me what day it is? It's the day I place you under arrest for arson. Resisting arrest. And being a general all-round pain in the what? ass. <laughs> no! You can't arrest me! Not now, I just got back from the last century. Would you look at that! Edna Strickland, drunk as a skunk. I'm not drunk, you reprobate! I'm a time traveler! Sure you are. <laughs> I'm loving this. I I'll prove it to you. Come with me. We can do the whole day over if you want. We can fix everything. We can start by drying you out. Come on, into the station with you. You can bunk with me, doll. I'd rather die. Stop it! Unhand me, you dolt! Arrest her, and everything's good to go. Well, I guess that's it for Edna. Yes, I suppose it is. You know, whoever said time heals all wounds didn't know squat about time travel. What do we do about that, DeLorean? No need to do a thing. Ever since we synced up the time circuits, the temporal breakdown in Edna's DeLorean has accelerated at an exponential rate. By my calculations, the timeline should catch up with it in five, four, three, two, one, now! What the hell? Hey, Parker! You're not gonna believe this! <laughs> See? what I say? Ready to go home? Wait, Doc! The timeline's not fixed yet. Look! Sonny! You missed all the fireworks at the expo! Yeah, so I heard. Listen, I heard a rumor about you two. I guess we gotta come clean. Ta-da! Hottie took me to Reno last night! Try oh, to no. keep a secret in Hill Valley. <laughs> well, well you I'm happy for him, but... Us or what? Then it's true. My grandpa's married the wrong grandma. I'm done for. Hey, are you feeling alright, kid? You don't look so hot. Uh... Artie, you can't do this. You're not supposed to get married for another five years. Well, I know Trixie and I were taking things slow. But after that witch Edna got me fired with that postcard, we kind of accelerated things a little. Not what postcard. I wanted to do, man. Oh, man. This just isn't right. Now, I know marrying a Canadian for a work permit isn't strictly by the book, but hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love. I guess you, you're not <sighs> Isn't wrong. Isn't he just the sweetest? Can you doesn't look like he's see fading. through me? Nope. Never could figure you out. I thought you'd be thrilled for us. You don't understand. You're supposed to marry Sylvia Miskin. But I did marry Sylvia Miskin! What? You didn't think my real name was Trixie Trotta, did ya? Don't oh feel too bad. Goodness. It was kind of a surprise to me, too. Wait a minute, you're Grandma Sylvie? Grandma? Hey, how old do you think <laughs> I am, kiddo? Uh, but you're so... so skinny and blonde and... Huh. Oh my god, I've seen you naked. <laughs> you're Sylvia? Are you okay, pal? Yeah. 
I'm fine. Great. You kids go off and have yourself a wonderful honeymoon. And don't worry about your dad, Artie. I'm sure he'll come around. Come around to what? Um, to approving your marriage. You seem kind of mad about it back at the high school. Well, that was before I got a look at her. Besides, as my dear old father Seamus used to say, no sense in getting riled up over something I can't do nothing about. And honestly, now that I met her, I can't imagine a better daughter-in-law than the charming Miss Sylvie here. Aw, thank you, Dad. As for you, stranger, I'll thank you to not go poking your nose in McFly family business. Oh, it is my business. It's been a pleasure, Agent Crockett. I'm happy that everything. See you in the funny papers, Sonny. Everything uh, went well. I thought we had to do another Hi, grandma, another mission of some sort, you but know, everything I took was just some fine. Pictures of Trixie in 1931. Hey, that's my grandma you're talking about. <laughs> oh man, it's good to be home. Here we are, back in good old 1986. May 14th? 15th. Best to build in a little lag time. It gives you a chance to catch up. It looks it like the estate like, sale is still going on. Feels like it's been hey, don't forever. Don't you want to stay, Doc? You gotta stop the bank from selling off all your old stuff. What are you talking about? Estate sale? Bank? I'm not dead, Marty. Clara and I are having a little garage sale, that's all. Garage sale? You mean... Marty, you're back from your trip. Hello, Doc. Selling off the family treasures, eh? <laughs> Not quite, but I hope you find something you like. Speaking of which, did you find what you were looking for? Yeah, I sure did. Great! Hey, is that a box of Asimov? Let me get this straight. Are you telling me you live here now? In 1986? Well, naturally. Claire and I maintain a part-time residence here. Wasn't that the case when you left? No. Strange. I can't imagine not sticking around. After all, I've got my late father's foundation to supervise. If I wasn't here, who'd present the annual Earhart Brown Scholarship for Young Scientists? That's awesome. <laughs> Something funny? <laughs> I'll explain it to you later. I don't see what's so funny about looking after a family legacy. Oh, almost forgot. I've got something for you. Hoverboard? Man, that thing has caused us a lot of uh, graduation. problems. Graduation. A lot of great things. That's too. not for another. The McFlies of Hill Valley. An exhaustively detailed history of your family, from your great great grandfather Seamus to the present. You traveled through time to write this? Well, most of the research was done traditionally, but your grandma Sylvia proved to be something of a mystery. Which is why you traveled back to 1931, uh, to look for her. Exactly. Who knew she was singing in a speakeasy on her stage name? This is great, Doc. Thanks. Ah, uh, it's the least I could do for the man who saved me from making the worst mistake of my life. Yoo-hoo! Dr. Brown! Oh, oh no. Edna? Wait. Aini! What's I... going on? What are you doing with my dog? The same thing I do every afternoon, silly man. Giving him such much needed exercise. Who are you? Isn't that right? You are not Edna. Hey, dollface, it's past time for our 3.30. Coming, sweetie. Oh, Mr. McFly, have you seen my stepson anywhere? Oh, Biff, I think you're late for an appointment. Oh, <laughs> well, gosh, uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, uh, hi, Marty. Don't they make a great little family? You'd never know they met in prison. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's no, crazy. Sam, let's just walk quietly. <laughs> are no more surprises. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. 1646. Uh-oh. Oh, what is this? I, th I thought we said no more surprises. Doc! Marty! What, <gasps> what is this? You gotta come with me. Back to the future. Marty, you can't be here. 
If your younger self sees you, the consequences could be catastrophic. My younger self? Oh, right! Bring him along too! This concerns all of us! What, what is going you on? Does something happen to us? Do we turn into assholes or something? Nah, we're fine. <laughs> are we great grandkids? They're... What the hell? Great Scott! What is going on? <laughs> just, oh, there's so much. Oh. Doc, you gotta come back with me. Oh my back god. Listen to him, Doc. It's me you gotta help. If you wanna save Jennifer and our 12 kids. What? 12 Jennifer kids? Five jumps back. Doc, how can there be two more of me here? I have no idea. My all rights of space time continuum should be tearing apart like a cheap dish rag right now. It already is. What my evil twin and I are trying to say is the evil twin. is totally jacked up and you gotta come with me to save it. No, me! Oh god, who's this? So, we meet at last. Oh man, this is getting epic. You've altered my timeline once too often. What's going on, Doc? Well, we do seem to have a conundrum on our hands. Or three. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. Doc, but which one is the real me? Isn't it obvious, Marty? Come on! Prepare to be erased. Doc, wait! What about the space-time continuum? Yeah, what about my future? And mine? The future can wait. We've got a present to catch up with. Yo. There was just Where so much die? happening there. Mr. McFly, thrill me. Oh my god. Is that it? That is the end of Back to the Future the game. Oh, all the episodes we completed, 1 through 5. This is oh, that that was a great game, guys. I really enjoyed doing a let's play on this. Probably one of my favorites on my channel. The story was just so good. A lot of twists and turns. A lot of things I didn't expect to happen. That ending was just so priceless. What, four Martys in one place? Awesome. Really awesome. I really wish they would continue with this and uh, show what happens with their, like, that four Marty uh, situation there. But um, I can't ask for too much because that was just a great Let's Play that I just did. I really enjoyed it. And I hope you guys enjoyed the Let's Play too. If you guys did, please support this final episode by giving it a big thumbs up. How do you guys enjoy the game? Let me know down below. Also, make sure you guys leave some games that you guys want me to do a Let's Play on next. And I'll try to do it next time. But, like, subscribe if you guys are new. My name is Uncaged Games. And you just got caged. Back in time. Wait a second. I didn't end off the video yet, but to be continued, what? Is this for real? No. No way. Yo. Is this a real thing? I'm excited. I can't wait for this to have more. Let's happen. Let's go. I need to research on this. But like, subscribe if you guys are new. My name is Uncaged Games, and you just got caged.